Okay. We are moving on to the financial 15. So here is the last 15 minutes or so of our um, weekly webinar. And if you're just joining us on YouTube for this section, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and notification button. And this financial 15 is um, our financial planning topic, which today is why is financial planning so important? Um, if, uh, again, you're just joining us in this section, you, you just uh, missed an entire section that talked about uh, market updates and analyst reports and really, really good information from the Ed Slack group about um, the five-year rule for Roth uh, conversions if you're under 59 and a half and um, uh, um, a good question and answer about um, different uh, required minimum distributions and and other things. And those slot updates are, are really great if you're planning for retirement or in retirement. Kind of keeps you at the top of your game and those uh, keeps your you thinking about what you have to pay attention to. I don't expect any of you folks to become expert. I just want you to know, um, you know, kind of if something triggers a thought like, wait a minute, I better check with Mark before I do this. Uh, so I don't get myself in a bind. So if you want to listen to that, then you can find the weekly webinar and the topic would be the same. Why is the financial plan? Why is my financial planning uh, so important? So you see the first thing I have written here and I'm going to just adjust myself so I can draw on my pad here. But uh, whoops. Now you see all my news updates there, folks. How do I close that? OK, um, ah, I'm going crazy. All right, let's get us together. All right. You see this first thing here. I put it in bold. Because over and over and over again, I hear this from everybody who comes in just about. And they, a common conversation is, you know, I've been doing this myself for the last 30, 40 years, whatever. And that's investing. I'm talking about investing. Or I've been working with a person at whatever firm. Uh, and we've been investing and, and you've probably had some positive re results. No, whether you're doing it on your own or, or working with somebody um, you've probably had some real positive gains in your investment portfolio, but many people come to us and they say, but I don't, I don't feel like I have a plan. So what does that mean? There's no direction. You know, it's just like I, when I drove down to Washington DC, um, uh, last week to attend the, the slot training, I, I plugged it into my GP. I had two GPSs going. Um, and uh, because because the one, you know, not to get in the weeds, but I was I drove my wife car. My wife's car is a Tesla. I wanted to make sure that the one uh, on the screen, uh, I was paying attention to the charger. And by the way, it, it, up and back, no problem. The infrastructure is wonderful. That's no recommendation about Tesla as a company, but um, it, it's uh, they've got it together as far as the charging infrastructure. But all the way down, uh, no problem, and then back most of the way. Um, the, uh, without, without a charge, but I did stop for about 15 minutes outside of Baltimore. Um, anyway, so I had two GPSs going and I had, you know, a snack and things that I needed along the way. And, uh, uh I planned out my trip because I, I didn't just want to get in the car knowing that, Hey, I got a full, full tank or a full charge and I'm just going to go and figure out my way. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had it planned out. I knew exactly when I was going to get there or what the estimate time I made some, um, I made some concessions for potential traffic because I knew I was going around some difficult areas um, and I made a plan. I knew what time I had to leave. I knew what time I had to get there. I knew where I was going to stop um, and I knew what I needed. It would have been absolutely crazy just to jump in the car and figure it out as I went. Who the heck I might have end up and who the heck knows. But that is how most people handle their financial situation. Well, I'm, say, I'm, I'm investing for whatever purpose. I'm reading some information. I'm putting my money in different things that I think that are going to do well, or I'm, just, I'm following the guidance of this, this person I'm working with, and, and we're just kind of moving along. And again, it's been, it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's been easy, but you've had a pretty good time of having some growth. But then there's just no plan. So there's no plan to get to where you need to go. And that for most people, that's okay. I want to retire at this day, or I want the option to retire at this time. And then most importantly, how does it draw down, right? Many people, and I will give it credit. You know, I've talked to financial advisors all around the country, been, um, you know, asked to speak in front of groups. And most of the folks do a wonderful job of growing your money. Very few of us 
spend the time, education, and resources to learn about how to get that money out of that portfolio most effective, those investment portfolios. And you can't do it without a plan. Folks, you cannot do it without a plan. So it's And it's more than just uh, goals and risk tolerances. So many people talk about financial planning, and they, they, they do a very cursory job, and they say, okay, tell me how much you need to spend every year. And you say $10,000 a month. And people just take that on face value, and that's often not the answer, by the way. And, I, and even if you're an engineer and you keep, you keep um, really detailed records, we usually find areas that, well, maybe the spending might be more, or sometimes it's less. Often it's more. Often it's more. So you have to account for that. And it's more than just your goals and risk tolerances. And many people just set it up like, okay, my goal is to retire at 65. I'm going to need $10,000 a year. And uh, I'm about a, uh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, uh, 10 being the most aggressive, one being the most conservative, I'm about a five. And most financial advisors say, okay, we're going to take your, your basic goals and we're going, to, we're going to consider those. And then we're going to develop a portfolio based on your risk tolerances. You heard Cornerstone say you should be investing up to your maximum risk tolerances. But that's not how you should be investing. right? You should be investing based on what your needs are given any time in your life. And make sure that you're, making sure your cash flow is available. And making sure that you've got the growth you need or want during your lifetime. Folks, you can't do that without a plan. So it's more than just goals and risk tolerances. It gives you a foundation for decisions. I had to decide on my way down to Washington if I was going to stop, you know, two hours in or, or, or an hour and a half in or two and a half hours in to get to my destination and what that meant. If I was going to wait to eat to where I got there or eat along the way, I had these decisions to make. But my decisions were based on, you know, I had to be there at two, two o'clock, let's just say, for the board meeting for Ed. And I didn't want to be late for that. So I, I had... I had um, a plan I had to make along the way. You have things you want to do in your, in your lifetime, whether it's pre-retirement or during retirement, and you've got to have a plan for how you're going to fund those things, how you're going to, how you're going to get there, how you're going to get there safely, right, um, and uh, comfortably because you got to take all those risks into account. What happens if the market's down for the next five years? What if, it, what if it's, you know, what if we have very slow growth? What if we don't have this soft landing and we end up in a, in a recession or a, or a prolonged recession? What if interest rates continue to stay? There's a lot of what ifs out there. So you have to have this foundation for decisions and they're investment decisions. You know, every time a staff member comes to me and says, how are we going to invest the, you know, we've got you know, $200,000 in this client's account. They just rolled over this uh, IRA, whatever. Uh, where does it, how does it get invested? And I always say, well, what, what's the plan say? Where does it fit in into the plan? Because the plan drives that investment choice. So it gives you your foundation for decisions on your investments. Because if you know how you should be invested for that segment of money or that, that time in your, in your plan, it gives you clarity on how those funds should be invested. So that will help when... Um, when you have challenging times or uh, you can look at your, your individual accounts and say, well, you know what we did? We earned 5%. My neighbor just told me he earned 10%, but that doesn't really matter to your plan, right? Um, so it gives you, uh, it gives you good, uh, a good foundation for those investment decisions. Does that mean? I hope that makes sense. It gives you a foundation for spending. So many people come to us and say, uh, you know, we really want to travel during the first few years of, of our uh, vacation or excuse me, our retirement, like a permanent vacation. But uh, first few years of our retirement, we want to we want to travel a lot. And, you know, sometimes that could be thirty five thousand dollars a year. You know, the average we see people spend uh, is about ten thousand dollars a year. That's creeping up pretty quickly. But many people spend thirty, forty thousand dollars a year in, um, in the first few years of retirement and vacation. And without a financial plan, without kind of stress testing what that looks like, you don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing or something that's doable or something that's not doable. Again, if I, if I left, if I, instead of driving to Washington, D.C., which is about three hours from where I am, I was confident that I could reach there on that, that full charge that I had in the car or whether it's a full tank of gas. Well, if I was driving to Florida, folks, uh, I, I, I would have had to stop a couple of times. So it's a different situation. So that's the different. That sometimes that's the difference between spending ten thousand dollars a year in retirement or spending uh, thirty five thousand dollars a year. It could dramatic, dramatically, um, affect your plan 
And without even having a plan, a strong foundation, you wouldn't know how that could potentially affect things in the long run or maybe even in the short term. Um, so your spending, yes, it gives you a good foundation for spending. You know, travel is just one thing. Some people come and they say, we want to buy a shore house. We want to buy a vacation house. We want to buy a new car. Folks, a new car will cost you sometimes eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars $100,000. So these are significant expenditures. And they like to see how that's going to affect things and how you affect decisions. I realize I'm blocking my um, my marks up, markups a little bit. Um, and then, of course, your lifetime, right? Your your your, your lifetime um, uh, comfort and the things you want to do, like travel, like experiences, like gifting. What if you couldn't say, or what if you you didn't have clarity on? Well, listen, I really want to start gifting to my children. Or I want to start gifting to my charity or church or whomever. Um, how is that going to affect your plan? You might just roll along with gifting a, a gifting strategy because it feels good, and then by the time you're 80 years old, you run out. You run the risk of not having enough money to retire on, not having enough money to, to fund potential medical issues, um, etc. Or maybe by year five you can't vacation because you've gifted the money away. It's really hard to pull that money back when you've gifted it away. Um, and you might miss out on experiences because people go the other way too. They don't always just overspend. Sometimes they underspend. Sometimes they feel, you know, I saw this a lot with, uh, in, in the previous generations where, where there was some, um, exposure to the depression and things like that. People would say, I don't want to go out to dinner with, them. I'm thinking of one person in particular. We could not get this woman to spend her money. She was always saying she cannot go out to, to dinner or lunch with her friends. And she had plenty of money to do that. So without a plan and without, you know, being able to show you proof that you can do these things, you might just feel that, um, that, that the sense of not enough. Um, and that's, that's something some people just psychologically have to overcome, but at least on paper and in the plan or on the screen, uh, it helps you give the foundation for that decision, right? And you maybe don't miss out on those experiences, allows you to see different potential outcomes to different decisions or actions, and you can out act accordingly. This happens all the time. People come in, well, okay, we're thinking about moving to wherever. Now, what if we did this? What if we bought a house for $500,000? What if we rent it for the next 20 years instead of bought a house? What if, uh, what if instead of Florida, we moved to Alabama? What if instead of uh, Alabama, it was Arizona and um, and that include that might include travel back and forth from different places. And um, what if I retired last year, but I'd like to I'd like to continue working. I was offered a job. What if I work for another five years if this works out? And what does that look like in our plan? What if we start gifting now? What if we want to leave a million dollars to our kids? What if we want to leave nothing to our kids? What does that look like? Right. So it allows you to see different potential outcomes to identify. Uh, to different decisions or actions, and you can act accordingly. But you can't do that without the basis, the, the, the foundation of your financial plan. Again, this is why it's so important. It helps you make prudent decisions throughout your lifetime. And that's important. And it becomes, listen, folks, I, I'm going to talk about how often you should do this. But of course, you're going to hear me say you should do this every year because it just becomes a pattern. It come, becomes a behavior. So when you make certain decisions, you have a conversation with us. We run it through. And I'm not talking about, you know, should I should I spend the extra ten dollars on the organic pork chops instead of the non-organic pork chops? I'm talking about significant life decisions. And it's helpful to talk. to. I do it. I, I will contact my my trusted advisor, my accountant. Um, and I'll say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Do you see any negative sides of it? Uh, do you, uh, you know, any, anything that I might be missing? So it's really, really important. But again, without a financial plan, I wouldn't be able to make those decisions because I have to see what the, what the, the effect is going to be in the short term, uh, mid, midterm, and certainly long term. All right, let's slide back up here. So number two identifies issue that issues that you may not be aware of. Here are some examples. Irma, income-related monthly adjustment amounts that affect the, the amount that you're going to pay towards uh, Medicare. I hear this all the time. People read books, uh, attend webinars, um, attend um, seminars, and they talk about the, the virtues of tax-efficient planning. 
I talk about, I think this is very, very important. Of course, if you've been listening to me for more than a minute, you know that that is an area we focus greatly on and I am passionate about it and we make significant life changes for people um, in our practice. Absolutely life-changing kind of events uh, and actions. Uh, but you can really get carried away with that. And if you're not ready for it, things like Irma, we have a tool that calculates um, the, the potential cost of Irma by doing by doing Roth conversions. We're typically talking about Roth conversions by doing Roth conversions or not doing Roth conversions so that you can decide accordingly. You know, we often see where you're, over your lifetime, you're going to spend $130,000 on Irma compared to $60,000 if you do it via Roth conversions. And that's a pretty easy decision in my book but you can decide accordingly. But if you are, I, I will tell you, if you are between 55 and 60 years old, or I would say younger than 55 or 60 years old, and you haven't started the discussion around retirement planning, this thing called IRMA is not even on your radar, nor likely is taxation on social security. And that's the next bullet item is tax on social security. Again, if you're not already experiencing it, you might not know that up to 85% of your um, of your Social Security benefit can be subject to tax. And people are going into retirement without these ideas in mind. And if Irma is only about 200, you know, let's say you're in the mid-range and you're spending about 250 generally, an individual sets so $500,000 a month, that's an extra $6,000 a month, um, or excuse me, a year, that you're paying for something, that's your Medicare cost, that you you may not be considering. How about now your Social Security is is taxed, you know, 85% of your benefit is subject to tax. Well, that could be, listen, folks, that could be thousands of dollars a year also. Um, Out-of-pocket expenses after Medicare. So, again, if you're not receiving Medicare benefits, you might not realize that the average individual in our area here, and it's different in er different areas in the country, spend about five, I think it's th this year, 5,000, about $200 a year out of pocket. Um, that's uh, co-pays and, and uh, uh, maybe supplement programs, things like that. But you might argue that, oh, I don't spend that, but that's the data. That's what Medic Medicare is the largest provider in the country. That's what they tell us that the average healthy person spends. So that's about $11,000 if you're a married couple a year that you also may not be considering. And then, of course, tax. People don't think there's still a lot. Many people are in this, this old tax-deferred paradigm where they're going to be in a lower tax bracket in the future. And they think, well, geez, I'll have hardly any tax. Well, what if you're taxed suddenly at 25% or if you're, you fall into that? We believe that the average middle-class American is going to be in the 40 to 45% effective tax rate. Won't that change your standard of living? You're darn right it will. So the, these are identify, these are issues that you just may not be aware of, and there's many, many others. Of course, health care. People don't realize how just how expensive health care can get long-term care costs. Travel costs, vacationing, travel, new purchases, roofs, all that stuff you just may not be considering, and we shake all those things out in the financial planning process. So again, you have a foundation and you can make prudent decisions. The third here is so important, critical items and strategic adjustments and the effect over time. So strategic adjustments now can have an overwhelming positive effect over time while letting inefficiencies continue can have an overwhelmingly negative effect over time. And you don't, most people don't even realize how, in, how these, um, either your plan structure or your investments are inefficient, not, not doing the best they can, or you're, 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 you're down the road and you're going to pay for something that you just can't undo at that point. Or you're, um, you know, there's so many examples of, of people paying tax on things they don't need to pay tax on, over converting Roth dollars that they never had to convert. These small changes that you make today, compounded over time, can have just staggering effects. That is not uncommon that I show people that over time, it's millions of dollars of difference by doing things just a little differently, not taking more risk, not taking, not spending less money, um, not, uh, not taking, you know, not, not at no more investment risk. Um, it's, it's just by shifting things and doing things a little bit differently and being efficient and identifying those critical items that can make a significant difference difference over your lifetime. So let me just read it again. Strategic adjustments now can have an overwhelming positive effect over time 
while letting inefficiencies continue can have an overwhelmingly negative effect over time. So, and of course, number four here. So we talked about identify issues that you may not be aware of. We talked about the critical items and strategic adjustments. And of course, of course, of course, I can't say this enough. Review this annually. There's no reason not to. Because once you get it set up and you, you do all this hard work around financial planning, and it's hard work, no doubt. It takes, you know, we have an eight-week process we use for most clients. We go through, we meet every couple of weeks. There's a lot of information that we that we take in. There's a lot of information and ideas that we, that we push out. Um, and then we have to do it again every year because if you just let it sit, you might be running really well and firing on all cylinders, whatever analogy you want to use. And then over time, you're going to drift away from that. The plan is just going to drift away because things change. Investment options change, investment efficiencies change, um, taxes change, uh, economic situations change. So just review it every year. There's no reason not to go through that process every single year. So uh, why, let's go back to the beginning here. Why is financial planning so important? It gives you a foundation. It gives you the ability to make prudent decisions during your lifetime. It identifies potential inefficiencies that can happen overwhelmingly negative or a correction of those overwhelmingly positive effect over your lifetime. Um, it, uh, it, it, it identifies potential issues that you may not be considering. We talked about IRMA, taxes, all those different things. But, uh, and of course, it should be reviewed annually. But it is the most important. Investments are very, very important, and you can't dismiss them. But um, uh, without a good financial plan, those investments, you're just, you're just driving anywhere to try to get to a destination that you don't even know what that is. So you've got to have that plan in place. Um, that's going to ha help you be more efficient, potentially have more money, be able to do what you want to do during your lifetime, uh, you know, not not hold yourself back needlessly. It's just all very important. And of course, I talked last uh, last week, and and I have a note here um, to to discuss estate. And of course, all this is tied into your estate plan as well, right? Those they're they're efficiencies too. It's not just about spending and um, and investments, but also you know what happens in your estate. And the estate isn't only just when you're no longer here. It's also how you're taken care of and things. And I talked last uh, last week about developing your team. You're a certified financial planner, and I believe it should be somebody from the Ed. I say the Ed Slot Elite Advisor Group because there's no other group like it. Um, the um, uh, you should have a CPA and at least one attorney, and all those people should be qu very qualified. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, you should you should go and listen to that from last week. And then everybody should be working together. But that's why financial planning is so important. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us at admin at outofbrowealth.com or questions at outofbrowealth.com. That is the program for today. Uh, there is no webinar next week because I will be on vacation. Um, and um, I'll see you back here on May 16th. We're going to have a Tuesday weekly webinar on May 16th. But uh, don't forget, we're going to have Ed Slott and David McKnight here um, on May 16th at 630. And you all are invited. If you haven't gotten your invitation, then let me know. But um uh, and if you want to come, you better hurry because we're getting and you haven't registered already. Uh, we're getting full. So we hope to see you there and we hope to see you in two weeks and enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.